that's okay, right? We good? We good, right, family? Okay. So, good morning, or great. I always say great sun rising because the sun is always risen. Even in our darkest days, the sun is still risen. So I say great sun rising because there's always a great sun rising somewhere behind the dark clouds. So I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, come from the place of inspiration today. And I wanted to do this because I want you to remember what inspiration means. So I want you to truly know what inspiration means. Before we go into inspiration today, today we're going to, today we're going to, talk about inspiration or petition God for the inspiration today. Now, what does inspiration mean? Hmm? What does inspiration mean? Stick with me today. It's going to be a good one. So just hang out for a little bit. Chill. Relax. Don't go nowhere. What does inspiration mean? Huh? <clears throat> now, inspiration, we know the definition. Um... You know, just for someone to find something within to that that has meaning and purpose, and they want to do something. But inspiration, I want you to go back to the root of the word and look where the word inspiration came from. And the word inspiration came from uh, a Latin word, which is inspiratio, or you can look at it in another Latin word. There's a bunch of different translations of this word, spirit, spiritus. Okay, spiritus, and you have the other, other one, um, which is I can't even say it. It starts with an A, apatus. But I remember looking this word up a very long time ago, and already knowing what it means. It means into the soul or into the breath. Okay, inspirare is um, the, the Latin word for it, and it means in to the breath or it means breath, spirit, wind, blowing, breathing, soul. So when we talk about inspiration, we're talking about the soul. So now we're going to petition God for a move of inspiration, but we're asking for a move on in our soul, a move in our soul, okay? And so, I just appreciate you all just coming here every single sunrise that I do this for, you know, however long I'm petitioned to do it. And so I just want you to get still and get reminded of who you are inside your soul and we're petitioning on behalf of God for the inspiration, the inspiration to know who we are, the inspiration to be confirmed, the inspiration to just look within and not search without and to know that God is there already and, and know that God is always with us and we're, we're praying right now for God to express itself, God to express himself, God to express herself. God is the all-knowing, the infinite, the eternal, the everlasting presence. And so we're asking for the inspiration of God. <clears throat> we're asking for a move in our soul. We're asking for a move in our soul of God. We're asking for the inspiration of God, a breathing of God, a, 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 an actual feeling of God. We're asking for a feeling of God to be moved within our soul. So we're asking for the inspiration, a moving within our soul. We're asking for the breathing, the breath to become God so that we are knowing. See, we know ourselves. We know our souls through our breath. And so inspiration means breathing or means breath, means into spirit. So when we breathe, we need to recognize that that is the touching of God. 
That is touching God when you breathe ah, on your hand. You're feeling God against your hand. And I want you to understand that every time you breathe, you breathe God. Every time you're breathing, you're breathing God. You're breathing the breath of life. You're breathing the internal, eternal, everlasting presence of God that is always present within you. I want you to know today that God is present within you. And so we ask for a move of inspiration, a feeling of our soul, but just to be reminded that through our breath, do we feel God? And I want you to know that every time you breathe, you're breathing God, you're touching God, you're communing with God, you're fellowshipping with God, you're having a conversation with God. Every time you're speaking, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of who? Out of the mouth of God. So every time you speak, you're speaking from the preceding of God, you're speaking preceding God, you're speaking before. This is what preceding means, to speak before God. And when you speak, you are speaking before God. Your words are going before you. Your words are going before you. So when you speak, let every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, let every word, let every word that proceeded out of your mouth. This is what we're asking today, God. And when I speak to God, I'm not speaking to God in some sky. I'm not speaking to God in the universe out there behind the, 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 the moon and Mars and Jupiter. I'm not speaking to God somewhere off in the far off galaxy. I'm speaking to you. And I'm petitioning God within you for you to believe, for you to know that God is right here. God is in you. So we got to have a move of inspiration. We have to be reminded of our inspiration. We have to be reminded of the inspiration of God. So we have to be reminded that when we breathe, we are touching God. We have to be reminded that when we when we speak, we are talking God. We have to be reminded that when we are communing, we are communing with God. We have to be reminded, and I want this to rich your soul like you rich a rag. I want this to rich your soul. Let this rich your soul. Let this rich your soul. That every time you, every time you move, that you can feel the, the 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 water. You can feel the spirit of God ringing out of you like water ringing out of a rag. And I want you to feel the the the, the wrenching of God when you speak. It is God wrenching out of you. God is wrenching out of you like water wrenching out of a rag. I want you to know inspiration today, true inspiration. And I, I don't come to inspire you to go and be the best version of yourself in this world and go be the best of your ego self. I'm not speaking for you to go out there and search for massive success and 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 and, and the best, perfect, most glorified, glorified or glorious looking relationship on IG. I'm not asking you to mask yourself with that type of false sense of identity and inspiration I'm asking you to mask yourself in the identity of God that knowing every time you breathe take a deep breath right now release that was God can you feel God being excited about this knowing that you have right now and with that very breath, you knew, you came to the acknowledgement that that was God. Can you feel the excitement when you released that breath? I felt it. When you released, you released with an exciting knowing that that was God just now. I don't want you to get lost in the sauce, lost in the fray of my words. When I speak about God, I'm not speaking broadly about God. I'm speaking narrowly about God. I'm not speaking broadly about God. I'm speaking narrowly. I'm speaking directly to you. Narrow. My, my point of direction is narrow. It is not broad. I don't speak broadly about God. I speak narrowly about God because I speak directly into you. And I'm petitioning God to have a move within your soul. The inspiration of God to have a move within your soul. And so God, so we so we define this word inspiration as 
as a, a, a breath, breath, or into the breath, or into the soul, into the soul, into the soul. So when we ask for an inspiration, we're not asking, oh, I need the motivation to get up and leave my house today. We're not asking for, oh, I need inspiration. I just need to see something that really inspires me for me to really act on it. No, 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 no. Change the vocabulary of inspiration. This is what God is saying to you today. To change the vocabulary of inspiration. How you used to know it. And begin to know that inspiration means you are into your soul. You are into the breath. Or when you breathe, you are breathing from outside. From inside you, you are breathing out God. You are having a connection, a communion, a communication with God. And so I want you to begin to look at this inspiration again. And every time you think of the word inspire or inspiration, you're thinking about a communion with oneness, with God, with all, the eternal, the everlasting, the presence. You are having a communion with the presence. Every time you breathe, it's a communion with the presence. Every time you breathe, you're communing with the presence. Every time you breathe, you're communing with God. This is inspiration. This is into spirit, into soul, into the breath. God, we thank you. We just thank you, God. We thank you because we know where you reside truly we know that you reside right here and when we speak we're speaking to our higher self so that we raise our vibration to that level to that we elevate we escalate we rise that vibration this is why i tell you to breathe at the end of this to rise to to rise escalate and let that breath sit and this is why i tell you to breathe because we want to raise the inner vibration to our higher selves to our highest self we want to raise it to god's status we want to raise it to god We're talking about having a communion with God. When we talk about inspiration, we're talking about going into the breath of God. When we talk about inspiration, we're talking about being one with God. When we talk about inspiration, we're talking about communing with God. Communing with God. So we ask for God to move on our behalf. We ask for God to move. We petition God to move. So when we petition, we're asking for a movement. We're asking for an act. We're asking for God to show up, rise up, stand up, stand out. God, stand out. God, stand up. I'm asking you to stand up in God. That's why I came with inspiration today. So you can know that into your breath. If you just breathe, you can touch God. You commune with God, and when you just breathe, you're standing up in the risen vibration of God. This is what it means to resurrect. Every time you, you breathe, you're resurrecting God, but you have to acknowledge and know, you have to know that every time you're, you're breathing, you're breathing from the depths of God. This is why we're going deeper into God. Every time you breathe, you're breathing deeper into God. Every time you breathe, you're breathing deeper into God. And you're resurrecting God. And every time you breathe, you're petitioning God to rise up, stand up, stand out. So that God goes before you. So there is no longer any fear. You don't need to fear when you know that God is right here. And when you call and petition God, when you petition God, whenever you're doing an activity, whatever you're doing, all you got to do is petition God. That means you're asking God to show up. Show up, God. 
my higher, stronger, most powerful version of myself. Show up so I don't fear this thing. I remember when I was jumping off of cliffs into the deep oceans of the Pacific and of the Atlantic and of the, and of the, the, the beautiful lakes of North Carolina. I remember when I was jumping off cliffs and I was at these heights and from down below, when you're looking up at it, it doesn't look that high, but when you get up on those cliffs and you begin to face your fears, you got to really call on God. You got to really petition an act. You got to petition a move within your soul. You got to go somewhere deep that you've never gone. You got to go somewhere deep that you have never seen come without come out of you before. You have to really pull from within you, out of you. You have to pull something bigger out of you. You have to pull something more powerful out of you. I'm telling you right now, stay put today. I don't want you to go nowhere. I'm going to really make God show up today. God's going to show up, brother. It'll be the last thing I do today. God is going to show up in you. Stay right where you are. And I remember when I was at the edge of those cliffs and I would run and I would do these quote-unquote mock runs. I would step back 10 feet and I would run to the edge, but I wouldn't jump because I was so scared of maybe how I would land or maybe there's a rock below I don't know about. But I'm watching people jump in the very same spot. I'm getting ready to jump in and I'm thinking, oh my God, well, really, really, really the courage to do this. You have to remove. <laughs> oh my goodness. You have to remove your false sense of self. And you have to really petition something stronger, something bigger to come forth. You have to remove your false sense of self. And this is what I'm saying to you. That no fear can really overcome you. No fear can really take you. No fear can really bring you down. No fear can really destroy you. When you begin to move your false sense of self. I want you to understand that God will show up. When you petition for God. When you petition for something stronger. Something more powerful. Something bigger than you. You have to remove the false sense of yourself. And that thing that what you think you are. That thing. That false sense of self that you believed you were. You have to remove those edges. You have to remove those, those, those fronts. You have to remove those false senses of yourself. You have to remove them. And then God will come out like Superman stretching open his shirt. And then God will show up. And then God will do what God does and God will just conquer everything that God wants fear, that you want to fear. God will show you, I have no fear. And I'm asking for a move of inspiration today so that you can understand that when you are standing at the edge of the cliff and you're looking over the water and you're doing these mock runs as I did and you're realizing that's just not who you are. You, you are bigger than this. You are you are more powerful than this. You're more stronger than this. There's something deeper within you. And you have to really go outside you have to really take this false sense and really destroy it, dismantle it. And God will stretch open the shirt like Superman and begin to just display power. And when you do it, the sensation of God will literally, you will feel God being, being beneath you, under you, over you, around you, carrying you as you drift through the air before you make land fall into the water. You will feel your cover. You will feel this. And this is the feeling of, 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 of adrenaline. When people, you see these adrenaline junkies, these people who do some extreme things. But what makes them do these extreme things is the inspiration is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's the move within their spirit. It's the inspiration. It's the knowing that I am moving within my soul. I am Moving on, on, on God, I am being petitioned by God, and so people get this high off of these adrenaline or extreme things. They get a high and they rush, a rush, and they chase after this high. But that high is the sensation of them removing their false sense of selves, conquering all their fears, realizing that fear doesn't live, fear doesn't have no life in the air. Fear doesn't have no life once you jump out of that plane. 
Fear has no life once you jump off that bridge. Fear has no life. Once you do something, all sense of self in this world and the identities that come with it are gone. And you realize and recognize and feelize that you are carried by God. You are one communing, having a communion with God. You are meeting, you are having a meeting with God midair. I had meetings with God midair. I was one with my most powerful self. I was one with my most highest self. It was so beautiful. It was so overwhelming. It was so love. Because I knew I was good when I jumped off that cliff. I knew I was good. I knew I was okay. I knew I was because I knew I was with God. Because I knew I petitioned something higher, something stronger, something better, something bigger to come out. I removed my fear, my false, what is it? False evidence appearing real. I removed my false evidence, my false sense of self. And I began to do what God does and God just, what God does is show up. God just shows up. We haven't even got into the meditation part of it yet, but I just we're just petitioning God to move. This is what a prayer is. A prayer is to petition God to move, God to act. And so I'm petitioning God to act on your behalf. That God shows up. That when you're getting ready to do something, fear doesn't live. And that's why I want you to practice the breath knowing that's why today we're talking about inspiration because I want you to be reminded that every breath you take you are breathing from the mouth of God and that when you breathe that is God breathing that is a connection of God with you that every time you breathe I want you to break away the false senses of self a shell being peeled off of you everywhere every time you breathe Breathing into the spirit of God, into spirit. That's what inspiration means, into spirit. So we're breathing into the spirit of God. And I want you to recognize that every time you breathe, you're breathing God. So no fear. Whenever you have something in front of you, let's get into our meditation. Whenever there is something standing in front of you, to <laughs> let's stay right where we are with the breath and I want you to go with me in this meditation right now and I'm already there it's so quickly how I got there and I want you to it's, it, just be there with me in this, this, this deserted field This not this field where it's grassy looking but a field where it's like a stony road looking it's like a stony road but it's, it's a field it's a it's not a road it's a pavement it's a pavement you're on this stony pavement and there's nothing as far as the eyes can see all around you but all you can feel is wind and all you can see is the blue sky and all that's above you is the scorching sun but the sun isn't hot because there's wind keeping you cool I want you to know that when you are in this desert, deserted place, breathe with me. Let that breath rise, right? Let it escalate. Let it slowly begin to creep. Let it slowly begin to crawl. Let it slowly begin to make its way to the top of your crown. Let it creep. Let it crawl to the crown. And then we let it sit at the top, right there at the top, right there at the crown. We let it sit. And we hold that breath right now. Don't do nothing with it yet. Stay there. You're in this deserted place. Feel all within your body the breath moving through your body. Feel within your body the breath moving through every part of your body. Your fingertips, your hands, your arms, your legs, your knees, the back of your knees, 
your stomach, your chest, your breasts, your throat, the back of your neck, everywhere on your body, begin to feel the breath move around in and through. And you're still in this deserted place, deserted, no one around, nothing around, as far as the eyes can see, nothing around. Clear blue sky. Sun is in it, and the sun is up at its peak, but it's not killing you or scorching you because there's wind all around you. And I want you to begin to feel this wind move you and turn you and twist you and gush you about. But this wind, beloved, is not just going every which way in every which direction. This wind is actually pushing you toward your destiny, toward your destiny, your destination. And so I want you to feel this wind against your back. Release the breath. Slow. And every time you release the breath, I want you to feel that the wind is giving you an extra push. That that wind is giving you an extra push towards your destiny. Every time you release the breath, feel the wind give you an extra push. It's just pushing you. Every time you release, it pushes you forward. And I want you to begin to know that you may not know right now. You can't see the end. You can't see the destiny. You can't see nowhere you're going because there's nothing around you as far as your eyes can see. But I want you to just begin to believe and have faith. Begin to believe and, and trust in spirit. That the wind that is pushing you in the direction that it is pushing you, trust in that direction. And just allow it. Let go. Allow it and allow it to just push you. Allow it, let go and allow it to just direct you. Allow it to guide you. Trust that that breath is the larger breath. Trust that when you breathe, that is the breath of God. And trust that that breath is more larger. It has the knowing. That breath has the knowing. The wind is the knowing. Let's breathe again. Let's breathe again. Inhale through the nasal. Only through the nasal. Always through the nasal. Oh my God, I feel lightheaded. Let it rise. Let it escalate. See, when we let it rise, we're letting it rise from the ground up through our nasal. And then we're letting it escalate. That means it's creeping and crawling to the top of our crown. And that's where it begins to sit at our crown. And so when we let it, we got to let the breath move slowly through our body. That's why I say let it rise, let it escalate. Let the breath rise. Don't quickly do this. Slowly let the breath rise within you from the ground. Feel it pulling from the ground. And right now where you're at in the meditation, I want you to feel the breath pulling from the ground up. Feel it come through your feet. And let it rise throughout your body. Feel it passing through your nasal. Now feel it slowly crawling and escalating. And letting it sit. Now, don't exhale. But let the breath move throughout your body. Don't exhale it in the bio spirit yet. Let the breath move throughout your body. Let the breath move throughout your body. That doesn't mean exhale. It just means feel it. Feel it throughout your body. Now when you release this exhale, I want you to feel that that is the wind in this deserted place where you are giving you another push towards your destiny and I just want you to trust don't look around you don't look behind you don't don't even care to look what's in front of you and I mean look within you look inside you looking inside is knowing that God is with you God got you God is there God is taking care of you and so now we release slowly slowly release the breath so good.
good to me. That feels so good to my soul. Because I'm there with you. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. I am there with you. And I'm doing the same as you are. Trusting that with every breath. That is the wind pushing me, guiding me toward my direction, my destiny, my destination. And I'm good. I'm not fearing. I don't care what's in front of me. I don't care what's on the side. I don't care what's behind. Because I know within, I trust within. I trust the breath. And all, if all I got to do is just breathe to know that I'm okay, then all I'm going to do is breathe and know that I am okay. If all I got to do is breathe to know that I am okay, then all I am going to do is breathe and know that I am okay. So we breathe. Inspiration. We breathe into the spirit, into the breath. Let us breathe again. Let us inhale into the biosphere, but let us bring it from the ground. Let us feel it rise through the vibration of the ground, the earth, into our feet, letting it rise, 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 rise. Let the breath rise. Let it rise through you. Let it rise within you. Let it rise within you. Let it rise within you. Let it rise through the nasal, slowly. Let it now escalate to the crown. Slowly. Every time I do this, I get lightheaded. I don't know about you, but if you're doing it right, you'll feel lightheaded like I am. And let it, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it escalate. Every time I let my breath escalate to my crown, I get lightheaded. And that's, that's God. That's how you know you're communing with God. Because you get light. Light. Not lightheaded like weight-wise on your feet. But yeah, when you actually get lightheaded, you are light on your feet. That means you cannot stand flat-footed. That means you're not heavily dense on your feet. When you become lightheaded, you're actually, you're actually, in, 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 in a lack of a better word, you're actually floating on air. You're actually walking on air. Because you're lightheaded. You're not on your feet correctly. That is all spirit. When you're lightheaded, that is all spirit. That's what it means to be lightheaded. Think of the word light. When you're breathing the breath, letting it rise, and then when you let it escalate to the crown, that's where I get this lightheaded feeling at. And to be lightheaded is to be light on your feet. To be lightheaded is to see, feel, and sense the light of God. That is the communion of God at the moment you're having a lightheaded moment. That is the communion of God. That's why they say the light goes off in your head. Yeah, when you're lightheaded, the light is going off in your head. The light. The light is going off. And you feel lightheaded, weak in the knees. If you're standing. And you feel lightheaded. And that lightheadedness is the communion with God. The breath, when you're breathing, that lightheadedness that rises to the crown, that is the communication with God. That is the communion, the fellowship. That is the oneness with God. That's why you're supposed to take every breath serious. You're supposed to breathe throughout your day to stay in communion with God. Release that breath and begin to feel the gust of wind pushing you towards your destiny even more, even greater. Oh my God. Oh God. Every sensation, every sensation that you feel when you're feeling lightheaded, when you're feeling the breath, when you're feeling a gust of wind, when you're sensing the sun, when you're sensing the sky, when you're on that desert place, that desert, when you're standing in that desert pavement, and all you see <clears throat> around you is nothing but space. But you're not fearful. You're one with God when you breathe into the breath, into the, into the spirit. And you're using the breath to connect with God. 
and when you use the breath, you become lightheaded. That, and when you become lightheaded, that is your communion. Now, you become lightheaded when you are intentional about breathing. But to be lightheaded is a very good thing. To be lightheaded is a very good thing because you are sen sensing the breath rise to the crown. And when the breath is, when, this is why you breathe slowly, slowly, slowly. If you ever sat with a meditation um, guru over in the, the eastern countries like the Philippines, as I did, when I sat with a a, 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 a Taoist teacher over in the Philippines, and he was teaching me about... <laughs> He was teaching me how to breathe. He was telling me I was breathing wrong. And he was teaching me how to breathe from right here in my solar. He said, I want you to breathe from your solar. I want you to breathe from your solar. And when I was breathing from my solar, the solar plex, when I was breathing from my solar plex, he was teaching me how to walk. When I went to Texas and I sat with a meditation teacher over there, and she was teaching me the breath and at the same time how to walk in the breath so that you are cognizant more of the breath, not of the walking. And these masters and these teachers and these gurus and these ascendant light beings, when they were teaching me and when I was, um, and even in Dominica and I was sitting with a, a, um, a mastermind over there when we were talking God and we were talking about us as God. When I was, when I met with an actual master yesterday, just yesterday I met with a, a, a master from Nigeria. Sitting and meeting and teaching and learning from these ascended masters and these light work, these light beings and these souls and these when I was with them, having conversation and having learned with the breath, how to use the breath, how to walk in the breath, it taught me so much more about the breath versus walking. And I'm here to tell you, teach you, let you know that stay connected to the inspiration, stay connected into the spirit of God, stay connected into the spirit of God. Stay connected into the spirit of God. The breath. When they were teaching me how to walk in the breath, they were teaching me truthfully how to stay. What's the word? Um, it's it's how to intercede, how to stay inter in, in intercession. How to stay in an intercession with God to intercede with God. They were teaching me how to stay in constant communication, constant contact with God. That through my breath, when I would walk, I'm more cognizant of the breath than I am of walking. And therefore, when I walk, I'm walking in unison and oneness with God because I'm more cognizant of my breath and so today we're asking for the inspiration to be into the breath into God into soul so that we are more cognizant of our breath so that we are having a constant intercession with God a communion, a connection, a contact. So be cognizant of the breath today. Be inspired today. Be inspired today, beloved. Be inspired today. Be inspired. And think of inspiration as going into the breath. When you are having a moment of inspiration, you are having a moment of being one with God. You are having a moment of being into the breath. You are having a moment of being one, connecting solely with God. And so the inspiration today is to be inspired by your own breath. 
the inspiration today is to be inspired by your own breath and I shower you with love I shower you with the breath of God. I shower you with the connection and communion with God. I shower you with the constant contact with God. I shower you to be in communion with God. I shower you to be in love with God. I shower you to be in love with you. I shower you. I shower you. I shower you. I shower my own being. I shower myself. I shower my self-love. I shower my self-worth. I shower my, my intercession with God. I shower my contact with God. I shower my being with God. I shower my communication with God. I shower myself with the wisdom and the, the, the constant communication of acknowledging God. And I shower my feet with the anointing of walking, having an intercession with God. I shower my feet also to be cognizant of when I walk. I'm having a breathing not a walking, but a breathing meditation with God. Not a walking meditation. That I am cognizant of my footsteps. I am cognizant of where I go. And I also shower myself and I shower you. That you remove all false sense of self. All false sense of identity. And that God shows up. God stands out. God comes through. In, as, for, with, to, through you. That God shows up as you. God shows up with you. God shows up for you. God shows up in you. God shows up through you. God shows up to you. God shows up. And I'm speaking to a narrow God. I'm speaking directly to you. I want to thank you for this beautiful, beautiful opportunity to speak to you today. I want to thank you. For this beautiful, beautiful opportunity to have shared with you inspiration, the inspiration of breath today. I ask, I ask you that when you leave this meditation, continue to go into a deeper meditation. Spend five or ten more minutes into that space where you were in meditation, that deserted place, and continue to breathe and allow that breath to be the gust of wind that carries you closer to your destination destination, so that you know how to trust when there is nothing in the foreseeable surrounding area that you can grab onto, to hold onto, to trust onto. You got nothing you can trust onto. All you can trust is within you now because you're in a deserted place where there's nothing you can grab, no one you can call, nothing you can see to trust on. And so now you must trust on in as you. You must trust on you, trust in you. Trust as you are God. Trust as you are God. Trust. Trust. So in this place, I want you to go deeper into your meditation and begin to trust that you don't need anything around you. You don't need to see anything around you. You don't need to have anything around you to hold. You don't have to have anything around you to grab. You just need to trust that what's with you and the only thing you got with you in this deserted place is the breath. And as you breathe, in, do your rest exercise, rise, escalate, sit at the top. Let it rise through the nasal, let it escalate, creep and crawl to the crown, and then let it sit at the top of the crown. And then release it slowly into your atmosphere so that your atmosphere reflects your biosphere. And then you can begin to trust that breath is the wind that pushes you closer to your destination. You can begin to trust that that exhalation, that breath is the wind that gains you closer to your destination. And if you're doing it right, I'm not saying all of you will feel lightheaded, but you should feel a lightheaded sensation if you're doing the breath right, if you're doing the rise, the rest exercise right, the rise, the escalate, and sit at the top. If you're doing it right, if you're slowly letting it creep from the ground up through the nasal passage, to the crown you should feel that every single time okay I shower you in peace I shower you in love I shower you I shower you in greatness I thank you for being here this was a little bit longer than my normal ones but I asked you to stay with me today because I wanted it to be a little bit longer 
than my regular ones. I wanted this to go a little bit longer. For those of you who stay here, you got something from this. And I want you to continue to go deeper into God through your prayers and through your meditation. Okay? We will continue this. We got more to go. Be here at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow, be here sharp. 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, um, yeah, uh, you can follow me if you know already. And you can go to my YouTube channel, Obeying Meditations, O-B-E-N-G Meditations, to get the rewind, or you can get the rewind from right here. Um, I, I love you. I love me. I love us. Be well and be light. Ashe. Atone. Atone. That means be at one. And amen. I'm so enriched. My soul is so enriched for you being here. Thank you. Join me again tomorrow.